At this point in the build, we're at a crossroads. There's a significant amount of handwork, and at the same time, some delicate and precise CNC machining to go along with it. I have some fascinating materials and material properties to discuss in this video, and I think you'll enjoy the reasons I use these materials and the results they provide. Finish work is a double-edged sword. It's something I look forward to and dread simultaneously. The instruments undergo a beautiful change at this point, but just as each point before it, a single mistake can do extensive damage. I'm using Zepoxy finishing resin as a pour filler. This African mahogany is a striking material, and the deep pours bring a lot of character to this material. On the other side, I'll be doing some precise CNC machining to create custom tuning machines for this instrument. While I'm not making every part of these machines, it is something that I have on my radar, and something that I'm sure I will address in the future on this channel. Feel free to subscribe. The main reason for doing this is that the spacing between tuning machines for a slotted peg head octave mandolin in these precise dimensions is not available. It's an interesting challenge for me, and I think it's going to put the machine, my tooling, and my expertise to an exciting test. The material I'm making these from is aluminum bronze. While I have milled a lot of aluminum, I was hoping that this material would be within the range of capabilities of my air-cooled spindle and still make exceptional parts. To my surprise, while this is a relatively hard material, it mills exceptionally well and is very forgiving. The Zepoxy pore filler will be sanded back and only fill the open pores. This filling material has multiple benefits. It can be sanded quickly and easily, and we will need to apply several coats while sanding back between each to fill the open pores of this mahogany. Additionally, it hardens and enhances the tone of the instrument. I work both with and across the grain to fill these pores as efficiently as possible. Mahogany is known for its warm tones, which I am after on this build. However, I still want the instrument to project and be balanced and clear in tonality, and this pore filler material will aid in achieving that goal. I prefer to operate in small batches and sections while working with the instrument. This ensures that each face and surface has enough time to cure before moving on to the next. Patience is crucial during this process provide the best results. While the Zepoxy finishing resin cures, we will return to the CNC machine and bring these stock pieces into specification. First I begin by preparing the material for the specific stock sizes that I have established in the stock section of my cam. Precision is key in these small mechanical parts, so I'm attempting to hold very tight tolerances and making sure that I start with precise stock will make that challenge a lot easier. I have milled sacrificial material to securely hold the part into place and ensure precise attachment to the spoil board. I deliberately adjust my step over, step down, and spindle speed to cautious levels to make sure that the air blast cooling is enough to prevent any damage to both the tool and the part.
Sanding is something that can be therapeutic, and if you can get into the right mindset, something that you can actually enjoy. It's tedious, and all that tedious work is what, in the end, provides the results we're looking for. I won't torture you with the hours of sanding and recoating the pore filler on this one, but it is interesting to watch a bit of it. The goal is to sand back to the surface of the pores and provide an even surface for the finish. I'm using True Oil for the finish on this one, and as far as oil-based finishes go, it's one of my favorites. It dries quickly, and several coats can be applied daily, but taking your time between coats and a little finish sanding between every few coats is the most reliable method. This milling operation is a lot trickier than I'm showing here. Any offset, even tiny ones, will become very obvious with such a small part and tool. Any error in the indexing or the stock dimensions will make one side more prominent than the other. I was able to index the part from both sides and divide the difference to eliminate any error in these tolerances and make the wings of this part very even. I'm not entirely set up to make the worm gears for these, so I will repurpose these inexpensive ones and make them my own by CNC milling custom wooden buttons. I use a lathe to clean them up, file the flat spot, and drill a hole for a pin to prevent slipping. The mixture of CNC milling and the handwork of finishing these buttons is the perfect conclusion for this video. 
I enjoyed discussing the material properties and practicing the art and science of Luthery, and I hope you do as well. I do my best to produce a video each week, and if you would be so kind as to subscribe, you will enjoy what is to come. Thanks for watching.